Hello everyone, my name is Crystal Lips and I am a sonographer working and living in Pennsylvania. Today's presentation will be focusing on a case I scanned which was found to be a mucinous neoplasm of the appendix. On the bottom of this slide you can find my contact information should you have any questions following this presentation and they will again be shown at the end. Thank you. Alright, a little about me before we dive in. I hold a bachelor's degree in medical imaging and that was rewarded by Bloomsburg University here in Pennsylvania. I also have an associate's degree in diagnostic medical sonography from South Hills School of Business and Technology in Pennsylvania. I am board certified in abdomen, OBGYN, breast and vascular sonography and I'm currently an active general and vascular technologist. I am now the lead vascular technologist at my hospital and I have been a full-time employee for about four years now. The following presentation was a pathology I scanned and followed myself, so I hope you guys enjoy. The pathology found was scanned using a Philips HD11 and involved both the curvilinear abdominal probe and the transvaginal probe. This patient also received a CT scan at the same hospital following their ultrasound. My patient was a 67-year-old female who presented for a routine transvaginal scan after a one-day instance of postmenopausal bleeding. She had been menopausal for 15 years prior to this and had no previous gynecological issues in herself, however she did have a family history of uterine cancer. The ultrasound was performed a week after her instance of bleeding. Here, I included a few of her transvaginal images. My focus was on the well-encapsulated, solid-appearing structure in her right adnexa, which the arrows are all pointing to. In some of the images, you can see that she also has a fibroid in the uterus, but the focus is on the structure just inferior and to the right of that area. Some of the big sonographic findings in these images, which are indicators for this specific pathology of the appendix, include the mass having multiple layers, also referred to as an onion skin-like appearance, which can be seen well in image 3, the fact that it was well encapsulated and not peristalsing, like bow wood, is also an indicator, and the size of the area in question, since it appeared to be fairly large. Following the transvaginal scan, I took an abdominal approach to see if I could get a clearer idea of what was going on in this woman's pelvis. Again, I could see a large structure to the right of the uterus, seen here labeled as 2, which appeared to be larger than the uterus itself. On my scan, I found it to be close to 10 centimeters in length, it did not appear to have any vascularity, and again did not peristouse as bowel usually would. In some of these images, you can see the echogenic layers within the mass, which could easily be mistaken as an endometrium or other normal finding. If you recall, I started transvaginally, so I knew this wasn't the case for this mass. Here is a small part of the report by my radiologist for the ultrasound. She suggested it may be a large mass posterior to the uterus and possibly related to an ovary. I talked to her in person following the scan and she felt that the origin was very unclear at this point and suggested a CT for further evaluation. Again shown on this slide is an image of the mass transvaginally. Alright, the patient came back for her CT scan five days after her initial ultrasound. She did not have any new symptoms since her last visit at this time. Her CT was performed with IV and oral contrast. Included here is the report from the CT, read by the same radiologist that looked at the ultrasound. The mass is again seen to the right of the uterus and measuring over 12 centimeters in length, and it did appear to be solid. The scan was unable to determine the origin of the mass, but again was suspected to be ovarian. At this point, the radiologist suggested a direct inspection of the mass to determine its exact nature. In these images from her CT scan, the arrows point out the mass in question. On this slide, we get a glimpse at the details from her exploratory surgery. I couldn't imagine being a physician looking on during this because they truly went in expecting ovarian pathology, 
but immediately saw that instead it was a large appendiceal tumor. They described the tumor to be mobile and fluid field, and due to the confirmation of the appendiceal pathology rather than ovarian, the surgeons performed a right hemicolectomy and removed the mass. At this time, they also did a hysterectomy and an oophorectomy. 21 lymph nodes were removed from the pelvis due to metastatic concern from the mass. Later, the pathology report confirmed that the mass was indeed a low-grade cancerous mucinous neoplasm of the appendix, which was successfully removed prior to metastasis. All 21 of her lymph nodes also came back to be negative for carcinoma. The mass was determined to be about 7 centimeters in size, which was actually closer to her ultrasound findings rather than her CT. So at this point, you're probably thinking, okay, but what is this mass? Well, it's when the appendix begins to fill with sloughed off mucinous epithelial cells, which eventually cause an inflammation and reaction within the pelvis. The exact reason of why some people's bodies begin to do this is unknown due to the rarity of such occurrences. Most patients present asymptomatically, but some can experience acute appendicitis-like symptoms. The average size of the mass is only about a centimeter and a half, making my case extra rare due to how much the mass was able to grow before discovery. This type of pathology is more common in women in their sixth decade of life, which fits my patient perfectly. The findings can also be classified as low grade, meaning it has low epithelial features, or high grade, meaning it has high epithelial features. In the instance of low grade malignancy, as in my patient was found to have, the largest concern would be that it would burst or leak, spreading the malignant cells in the peritoneum of the pelvis. This finding is again very rare, occurring in less than 1% of pathologies of the appendix. For this patient, sonography was absolutely the first step towards her diagnosis of a mucinous neoplasm of the appendix. Again, a finding like this is extremely rare, less than 1% of patients. My specific patient left with a positive prognosis as her carcinoma did not have the chance to spread before being removed. She is to have follow-up CT scans and colonoscopies for the next several years of her life, which is a standard treatment following this type of removal. In her case, as in many, the initial cause of what triggered her mass is unknown. And I would just like to say that she was quoted during her six-week post-op appointment as saying she feels better and more regular than she ever had prior to her surgery, which is absolutely amazing considering all the women had gone through and to think it all started with a routine ultrasound. All right, well, I thank you all so much for listening to my presentation. Again, here is my contact information, so my phone number if you want to send me a text about the presentation, and my email, my LinkedIn account if you would like to add me. Again, I'm Krista Lips from Pennsylvania, and I thank you all for listening. I know this was definitely unconventional and new, but I think we stuck through it, so thank you so much.